Hello folks, this is Tom from anti-proton.com. And on July 14th, 2012, we got hit by a coronal mass ejection. This is a point where the sun blasts a humongous amount of charged particles and so on at our Earth, slamming into us and causing all kinds of mayhem and so on. It's pretty normal, it happens all the time, but whatever. Uh, I detected it actually in my lab, or at least I believe I do. Of course, I don't have the high-powered, high-energy spectro spectroscopic devices required to know for an absolute fact that I detected it, but I believe that I did. And I want to show you quickly in a, just a short little video uh, my proof of detection. I did this with a gamma spectrometer and with radiationnetwork.com connected together. Alrighty. First off, what you're seeing in front of you is a graph from radiationnetwork.com. And you might note the big spike sitting right in the middle of it. Now, just to let you know, it was recorded officially, at, um, let's see, spaceweather.com, and I think NASA reported it and some other people too, that at 1824 UTC time, we got hit by a uh, coronal mass ejection, or at least a very high part, a very, very strong portion of the coronal mass ejection. Minus four is Eastern Standard Time, or Eastern, um, what is it, Eastern Daylight Time, whatever. It's Daylight Savings Time for the East, which is where I am right, right this moment. Normally it's GMT minus five, but whatever, four because of Daylight Savings. So that's 2.24 p.m. So if I picked up anything, it should have been right on the dot at 2.24 p.m. because all my clocks were synchronized. And if you look really, really carefully, you'll notice that that is exactly when I got hit. But a spike in a Geiger counter, that's not enough to prove anything. We all know that radiation is quite random. So let's look at some more detailed and convincing evidence. Alrighty, I have an LND7317 tube that's connected to, well, it's part of a, um, an SE International Inspector EXP Plus that I got from GeigerCounters.com. It's a nice Geiger counter, a big wide tube, and I had it sitting directly over top of my gamma spectrometer which is a 38 millimeter sodium iodide thallium dope crystal. In between the two of them was two inches of lead so that only high powered particles could make it through the lead, at least one million electron volts or more, for the most part. I mean, lower energy ones can make it through, they just don't have a very high chance of doing it. Less than 1% in fact. Now, because the sun was nearly directly over top at the time that I performed this test, and because of the fact that the, the Geiger tube was sitting over top of the um, uh, uh, crystal detector for the, the actual scintillation detector, most if not all particles coming from the sun would have more or less had to go through the actual Geiger tube before hitting the scintillation detector. This operated as a poor man's coincidence circuit, meaning that the two would have a spike at exactly the same time approximately. One can actually buy coincidence circuits, but I didn't know I was going to do this. This was just kind of for giggles, done on the spot, that sort of thing. Anyway, um, what you're seeing in front of you are data plots from the Nikonami 2 gamma spectrometer, which is a UCS uh, 30 from Spectrum Techniques. And I took a couple thousand data points from both um, uh, of the actual um, units, ran them through, and calculated standard deviations and so on for the exact moment that the, uh, that the uh, um, coronal mass ejection was supposed to have hit the Earth, and you would not believe it everything matches up. I think I actually did it. I'll, I'll never be able to prove it, mind you, but let's just take a look at the data and you tell me what you think. I think I detected it. Alright, now looking at the data, you see that the Nikonami 2 gamma spectrometer, which is a UCS-30 from Spectrum Techniques, and a 38 millimeter scintillation, uh, uh, scintillation crystal, sodium iodide, thallium doped, that's in the top. The bottom is Geiger Graph, which is RadiationNetwork.com, and that's an LND7317 Geiger tube uh, uh, from SE International. It's an Inspector EXP Plus, and I got that from GeigerCounters.com. These are their pieces of data. All right, the Nikonami 2 got an average in, of 138.95 counts per minute. Well, that's not actually an average. Let me be more specific. That is a mean the mean of all of the data points. And I uh, have a total of 1, 000, oh, sorry, 17,786 counts that were detected. Pretty good amount. Notice the standard deviation calculated for this is 12.0346, with a minimum of 109 and a maximum of 169, and that happened at, uh, at data element 70. And by the way, data element 70 is exactly, exactly at 2.24 p.m. on the dot. By the way, 
if you look down at the Geiger graph where it says that the maximum is 59 and at element 38, that happens to be also exactly at 2.24 p.m. on the dot. 2.24 p.m. where I live is also 18.24 UTC, which is when the coronal mass ejection hit. Now, notice that below in the Geiger graph, your standard deviation is 5.5, give or take, with an average background reading of 34.0816 counts per minute with a total of 3,340 counts detected. Not as much, but that's all right. You get a lot more off the scintillator. What I did for each one of these is I took the maximum value, which just, I, I wasn't going to take the, the maximum, but I took, it, it just happened to be that the maximum happened to be what I was detecting. That was the, happened to be the peak. So I took the peak that I was detecting, and from that, I subtracted the average, the, the, not the average, but the mean. That left how far away I was from the mean. And then I divided that by the, by the uh, standard deviation, and you notice for the spectrometer, the gamma spectrometer, I detected a spike that was 2.5 standard deviations from the norm. I mean, that's not exactly a sigma, a sigma 6 there, but it's still a pretty good standard deviation. For, the, uh, for, for Geiger graph and for the Geiger counter, it was 4.5 standard deviations from the norm. That suggests to me that what I was hit with was a particle shower, which contained gammas, uh, uh, gamma rays, probably some muons, electrons, their anti-counter, uh, their anti-particles uh, of various types. I was trying to say anti-matter counterparts, but I messed up. And you get hit by a shower, basically as a high-energy particle comes in, it bangs around other particles and causes spallation and all this other crazy stuff. Nothing to really worry about, really, but kind of amazing when you think about it. I believe I detected a coronal mass ejection. So it's really up to you to tell me what you think and let me know what you think. So that's enough of me droning on. This has been Tom from anti-proton.com, and uh, enjoy your radiation detectors. <laughs>